welcome friends to my youtube channel now in my previous lecture i did few new medical problems related to phase transition and equilibrium and uh, i mainly did the problems related to first latent heat equation that is crossias clapeyron equation okay now in this video i shall going to discuss about the sixth and final chapter of thermodynamics that is low temperature physics or more commonly you can say joule thomson effect okay so let's proceed so today's lecture is on low temperature physics okay low temperature physics and there we study jt porous plug experiment okay jt porous plug experiment okay now what is the main theme of this porous plug experiment i am going to tell you now what we do in joule thomson experiment that a gas is allowed to pass under high pressure okay and uh, a gas here is allowed to pass through a high pressure to a region from high pressure to a region of low pressure okay and we mainly record the temperature of the incoming and outgoing gas okay so at first a gas is allowed to pass through a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure that is here high pressure the gas flows through a region of low pressure sorry low pressure okay that is this is the initial pressure is high say p1 final pressure is low that means the change dp is negative must remember it dp negative okay since the initial pressure is high and the final pressure is low the change in temperature say dp is always negative you must remember it and we have to note down note the temperature of the incoming and outgoing gas okay we have to record the temperature of the incoming and outgoing gas okay mm, you will find the diagram in various books you can check it okay so our main purpose is to pass a gas through a huge pressure difference and to record the temperature of the incoming and outgoing gas okay so joule and thomson did this experiment for large number of gases and uh, they found different type of observations that i am going to tell you that is this experiment this experiment is performed for different gases okay this experiment is performed for different gases and julian thompson conclude few um, made some observations based on this okay so what are the observations so let's see let's see the observations so this experiment is performed by julian thompson for various gases okay the gas is made to pass through a huge pressure difference and we have to know the incoming and outgoing temperature of the gas okay now the change in temperature with respect to pressure dtdp this quantity can be positive or negative depending upon the nature of the gas and also on the initial temperature so we can find this also positive or it may be negative depending upon the nature of the gas or on the initial temperature and later we will see that increase in temperature per unit pressure this term represents the joule thomson coefficient obviously by keeping enthalpy constant we will discuss it later okay so at first we are going to discuss what are the observations made by joule and thomson 
while performing this experiment for various gases okay the first observations that they made that on passing through the porous plug every gas shows a change in temperature okay so on passing through the porous plug on passing through the porous plug every gas shows a change in temperature this is the first observation now the second observation is that change in temperature is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the two ends of the tube that is you can say delta t is proportional to del p or you can say dt is proportional to db as you want so on passing through the porous plug every gas shows a change in temperature and this change in temperature is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the two ends of the tube okay third observation almost all the gases shows cooling effect at ordinary temperature okay except hydrogen helium neon okay they show heating they show heating at ordinary temperature okay and all other all other gases show cooling what is the reason behind it that i will discuss later when i told about uh, when i tell about inversion temperature i will discuss in details so now all the gases show cooling effect at ordinary temperature except hydrogen helium and neon they show heating effect why that i will discuss later okay now you have to remember for each and every gas there is a particular temperature at which the gas um, neither heats nor cool okay that means there is a particular temperature at which neither heating nor cooling takes place this is called inversion temperature okay so at inversion temperature at inversion temperature neither heating neither heating nor cooling okay at inversion temperature there is neither heating nor cooling okay there is neither heating nor cooling so for each and every gas there is a particular temperature at which neither heating nor cooling takes place and this is called what inversion temperature and uh, must remember that inversion temperature is different for different gases so you can write say ti that is different for different gases obviously this is different for different for different gases okay so inversion temperature is uh, different for different gases so these are the basic observations made by Joule and Thompson by performing uh, low temperature experiment for various gases that is while passing through the porous plug every gas shows a change in temperature which is proportional to the pressure difference between the two ends of the porous plug okay now at ordinary temperature or most of the gases show cooling effect except hydrogen helium and neon why that i will discuss when i will teach inversion temperature now at inversion temperature there is neither heating nor cooling for every gas there is a temperature at which neither heating nor cooling takes place this is called inversion temperature and this temperature is different for different gases okay so these are the basic observations okay now one thing the next thing i am going to tell you that jt process that is joule thompson process is an isenthalpic process now what is isenthalpic process that i told in first chapter that is a process where enthalpy remains constant is known as isoenthalpic process or isenthalpic process so how we can conclude that jt process is an isenthalpic suppose
there is a diagram okay and this is a diathermic wall that means heat exchange takes place between these two walls okay we choose a diathermic wall because we have to allow heat between this wall so suppose okay this is the piston this is one piston and this is another piston say give it a name say this is called p and this this piston is called q and this is a chamber and this is b chamber now here the pressure p1 volume v1 and internal energy u1 and in this chamber pressure p2 volume v2 and internal energy u2 okay say this is so this is the block diagram where uh, there are two chambers we choose a diathermic wall because heat exchange allow the heat exchange is allowed through this wall let p1 v1 these are the uh, pressure volume of the gas at a chamber and p2 v2 denotes the corresponding quantities in chamber b okay and there are the two pistons so what happens if the gas expands at first when a gas expands that means in that particular case the piston p performs work on the gas and in that particular ca case the gas performs work on this piston okay that means here the work is done by the piston on the gas and in that particular case the gas performs work on the piston so what will be the amount of work done by the piston p on the gas okay work done by the say piston c uh, sorry piston p on the chamber a on the chamber a this is simply p1 v1 okay so this is work is done on the gas and what happens in say, second case the work is done by the gas on the piston so in second case what happens oh i must uh, i forgot to tell that you must uh, check the uh, experimental arrangement you can follow ab gupta's book or bridge Lang's book okay or you can follow cl aurora part 2 book okay you just see the experimental arrangement you will get it there hmm. and also you can search the youtube videos so what will be the work is done by the gas on piston q on piston q this is simply p2 v2 now this is work is done on the gas and this is work is done by the gas now what will be the net work done by the gas this minus this so net work done by the gas this is what this is simply p2 v2 minus p1 v1 okay okay now this whole arrangement is kept isolated from the surrounding so that no heat enters or leaves the system okay this entire arrangement is set up in such a way that no heat enters or leaves the system that means since no heat enters or leaves the system work must be done at the expense of own internal energy of the gas right so so if no heat enters or leaves the system the entire system is kept insulated from the surrounding that means no heat enters or leaves system okay that is work is done at the expense of own internal energy okay so 
from first law of thermodynamics we can easily write that q equals to what uh, dq equals to du plus dw okay so if dq is 0 then du means minus dw so from which we can easily conclude that p2 v2 we can write equal to minus u2 and p1 v1 will be what minus u1 so what will be my p2 v2 minus p1 v1 this is simply u1 minus u2 you take u1 in left hand side so u1 plus p1 v1 this equals to u2 plus p2 v2 oh the marker is almost end so i have to buy a new one oh, apologize for this so this is simply h1 and this is simply h2 what is this enthalpy plus pressure volume work sorry internal energy plus pressure volume work means enthalpy okay thus we conclude that jt process is an isoenthalpic process okay so here we have to assume uh, that uh, we have to take the chamber in such a way that uh, no heat enters or leaves the system that means adiabatic condition must be performed so since the um, no heat enters or leaves the system what must be done at the expense of own internal energy of the gas so that's why p2 v2 we can write minus sign okay now p1 v1 equal to minus 1 and from which we can conclude that jt process is isoenthalpic process so what we conclude joule thomson process is an isoenthalpic process okay so what we can conclude we can conclude jt process is isen helpic okay now our next task is to find out the joule thomson coefficient okay so let us do this so how we can find the joule thomson coefficient what is the definition of enthalpy we all know u plus pv okay so what will be my dh my dh will be du plus pdv plus vdv and since jt process is isenthalpic dh is zero enthalpy remains constant so what we can write zero this du plus pdv means tds okay plus vdp this equals to zero that gives a name say one tds plus vdp equal to zero now let us suppose that entropy we have to substitute the value of ds so take s as a function of pressure and temperature because here pressure and temperature are the variables so take s as a function of pt so what will be my ds my ds will be simply del s del p t constant dp plus del s del t p constant dt now before you write this line you must have to write another sentence that since ds is a perfect differential because this is possible only ds is perfect differential so ds will be this now substitute this value of ds in equation one so what we get just do it t this is del s del p temperature constant dp plus t del s del t pressure constant dt this is sim uh, sorry plus vdp equal to zero okay okay now what is it from maxwell's relation what you can write from maxwell's relation you can write del s del p t means minus del v del t pressure constant okay so t into this is simply del v del t pressure constant dp this is what cp this is cp dt plus v dp you can write zero okay now what will be my cp dt just write what is cp dt this is cp dt will be simply this t into del v del t pressure constant minus v into dp now what will be my dt dp 
my DTTP will be one by CP. This is T into del V del T pressure constant minus V. So the marker is almost end. So that's why the writing becomes poor. Apologize for it. So what is this DTTP at constant enthalpy means Joule Thomson coefficient. Okay. So mu. So mu can be written as 1 upon Cp T del V del T pressure constant minus V. Okay. So you can conclude that Joule Thomson coefficient is a measure of increase in temperature per unit pressure keeping enthalpy constant. So this is the expression 1 upon Cp T del V del T P minus V. Okay. Now in my next video I shall going to discuss the value of mu for different gases and the introduction of inversion temperature. Okay. So if you don't subscribe my channel then kindly subscribe it and share it in social platforms to get latest updated videos. Okay. Thank you.